Hey everyone, my name is Ryan Hester. I'm a rotorcraft instructor here at SUU. Today we're going to go over how to pre-flight the R44 Raven 2. So uh, typically if you're going out to fly this bird for real, we're going to go line by line through that checklist, make sure that we're getting everything covered and that we're not missing anything. For today's video, we're just going to go over some few main points, uh, show you guys how to pre-flight. Let's get started. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come into the helicopter, grab our checklist. Usually it's lo located in that front right seat pocket. And we're gonna make sure that our airworthiness and our registration certificates are, are good and valid. Um, we're also gonna wanna make sure we have our operator's handbook specific to this aircraft, which would include a weight and a balance. We're gonna make sure that our Hobbs types are checked and that any aircraft tie-downs are removed before we start. All right, so now we're gonna switch our battery on. We're gonna be looking for our carbon monoxide light to flash twice to indicate normal functioning. One and two. We're also gonna check our fuel to ensure that we have enough uh, fuel quantity for our flight today. And then we'll leave that battery on, come around to the other side and do our push to test buttons. So now we're gonna check our push to test buttons. These are located on the right side within this cal door. Main rotor temperature, main rotor chip, engine fire, tail rotor chip, low fuel, and fuel filter. Next, we wanna make sure our lights are on and functioning properly. So we got our strobe light in the back, we got our nav lights on the side, and our landing lights in the front. Next, we're gonna open up the cal doors on the right side of the helicopter, and we're gonna inspect we have our main rotor gearbox. We got some push pull tubes that run all the way through the tail boom to our tail rotor. We've got our hydraulic system. We have our clutch shaft here as well. And we're gonna check the cracks, conditions, and security, see if anything's leaking. Um, these are the type of things we're looking for on our pre-flight. First flight of the day, um, we're also gonna wanna make sure that we check the, uh, the fuel lines. So we got this one here. This one is coming from our auxiliary fuel tank. This on the bottom is being routed over from the left side from our main. And then down here on the bottom, coming off our gas glider, we have our sump on the bottom. So we'll test all of these um, to make sure that there's no contamination, uh, debris, water in our fuel sample. Next, we're gonna climb up and inspect our hub and our mast. So when we climb up on the helicopter, we wanna make sure that we're only stepping on reinforced areas and that we're leaning only on the seams of the aircraft. Otherwise, the fuselage will get dented and uh, you won't be able to shut your doors and it'll cause damage to the aircraft. So next, once I'm up, I'm gonna visually inspect for fuel in my auxiliary fuel kit tank. You can make sure my pitot tube is clear. I'm gonna climb up and inspect our rotor hub. Making sure our blades are clear before we move it. Making sure that the Coning hinges, our teeter hinge, all of our bolts are nice and secure. I want to make sure that my lower and upper scissor are free without excessive looseness. I want to make sure my boots, both on my spindle boots and down here, are all nice, secure. Our zip tie is nice and intact and that our torque strap isn't broken. Next, move into the lower portion of the right side, uh, the cal door here. So we wanna look through our side intake, make sure there's nothing uh, clogging our filter here. And we're looking inside using our pre-flight flashlight, making sure our torque stripe is secure, and we don't have any cracks, leaks, anything that would be cause for concern, both on our engine components here and our sheet metal. Next, we're gonna move to the aft uh, right side cal door. What we're looking here is all of our push-pull tubes move nice and freely. Our torque stripe is nice and secure that our bell cranks move without obstruction. We're checking out our clutch actuator here, making sure everything looks nice, secure. Whole thing we're looking for, main thing we're looking for here is uh, condition security. We're checking out our teletemps here to which will give us an indication that there's been uh, overheating of our upper bearing here. We're also gonna check in our oil cooler door, make sure that we don't have any debris, anything that shouldn't be there. All right, so after we check the upper bearing here, just gonna grab our upper sheave, 
move it around, make sure that our belts have good condition and everything moves nice and freely. Next, we're checking out our cooling fan here, making sure that that safety wire um, on the nut in the back is nice and lined up with the torque stripe. We're also looking for condition and security of our sheet metal and any internal components. Next, we're walking down the body of the tail, making sure that we have, don't have any dents, that our antennas and lights are secure. Next, we're gonna take a look at our tail rotor gearbox, looking at our teletemp, making sure that there hasn't been any temperature exceedances and that uh, Mechanica has taken a look and cleared it to fly. We're gonna push our push-pull tube here, looking at our pitch change mechanism, looking at changing the blades, making sure our hinges Nice, secure, we don't have excessive looseness. Next, I'm gonna get the tail rotor moving just a little bit. And what I'm looking for is I'm listening. Listen to internal components that may be grinding, anything that may be wrong with my drive system as that tail rotor spins, that tail rotor drive shaft and our clutch shaft. Next, we're looking underneath the belly of the helicopter. This is a Raven 2, so we got two oil coolers looking for cracks, conditions, security, and leaks of all of our components. Checking out our alternator, our starter, making sure all our belts look good. All right, next looking at my left side cal door here. Looking back into the engine, looking at our exhaust riser manifold, making sure that there's nothing, same thing as before, cracks, conditions, security, leaks. I wanna make sure my oil filter is nice and tight. Little all my ignition leads coming off my magneto are nice, there's no wear and tear on any of our wires here. We're gonna go ahead and check our oil. I'm gonna make sure that our oil is at sufficient level, seven to nine quarts. The spread looks good. So after we've gone through, inspected the helicopter, all of our fluid levels are good, full, all of our teletemps have not been exceeded. We've checked everything for cracks, leaks, security. Um, now we're gonna do uh, what we call our 23 point final inspection. We're gonna make sure the helicopter is all buttoned up and good to go fly. Fasteners here, make sure our fuel caps are tight, make sure our static ports aren't being covered, ensure that our cotter pins are installed on our doors. Next, we wanna make sure everything's nice, free, and clear. So we're looking at everything from our tail to our skids, making sure uh, of any hazards that we might wanna be aware of before we start up, things like if we're on an icy surface. And then we're checking out our blades, looking for uh, corrosion, um, bond line exposed, things of that nature. That's it for today's video. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out our other videos.